At the very edge of the Americas, where the land narrows to its final point, two giants meet. They stretch across hemispheres, cradle continents, and command the pulse of global weather. One is wild, moody, and tempestuous, the Atlantic Ocean. The other is vast, mysterious, and ancient, the Pacific. And here, at the southern tip of South America, these two oceans collide. But what really happens when the Atlantic meets the Pacific? Is it a clash of worlds? Do they mix together peacefully? Or do they fight in a never-ending struggle? Today, we dive deep into one of nature's most awe-inspiring encounters, the meeting of oceans. Imagine sailing south along the spine of the Andes. The mountains sharpen, glaciers crash into the sea, and winds howl across the fjords. Beyond the last outpost of human civilization lies Cape Horn, the southernmost headland of the Tierra del Fuego archipelago. Here, at 56 degrees south latitude, the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans meet in an elemental confrontation. Sailors have long called it the end of the world. And for good reason. The waters here are not calm. They churn, twist, and rise with fury. Waves as tall as buildings crash without warning. Winds exceed 100 miles per hour. But beneath this violence is something subtler, something profound. Two oceans, each with its own identity, colliding at the planet's southern gate. To understand their meeting, we must first know who they are. The Atlantic Ocean is the younger of the two, about 150 million years old. Born when the supercontinent Pangaea fractured, it is a basin of connection. For centuries, it has been the highway of human exploration, trade, and migration. Its waters carry warm currents northward, like the Gulf Stream, which tames Europe's winters. But it is also a restless ocean, home to powerful hurricanes and shifting tides. The Pacific Ocean, by contrast, is ancient. At 200 million years, it is Earth's oldest surviving ocean and the largest by far, covering more than a third of the planet's surface. It contains more islands than all the other oceans combined, and in its depths lies the Mariana Trench, the deepest place on Earth. The Pacific is not just an ocean, it is a world unto itself. Its currents weave climate patterns like El Nino and La Nina, which can dictate weather across continents. And so, when the Atlantic and Pacific finally meet, they bring with them legacies as old as Earth itself. The meeting point is not a single line you can draw on a map. It is a dynamic, restless boundary shaped by currents, winds, and geography. At Cape Horn, the Atlantic's eastward currents collide with the Pacific's westward push. Unlike the Panama Canal, where human engineering connects the oceans in a calm, controlled fashion, the southern tip of South America is raw nature unleashed. The Drake Passage, a 600-mile stretch of water between Cape Horn and Antarctica, acts as the funnel. Here, the Atlantic and Pacific surge together, creating some of the roughest seas on Earth. There is no land mass to stop the circumpolar winds that circle Antarctica, so they roar freely, whipping the oceans into chaos. Sailors of the past dreaded this passage. Before the Panama Canal was built in 1914, rounding Cape Horn was the only way to cross from Atlantic to Pacific. Ships were often shattered by rogue waves or trapped in endless storms. Some legends claim that at the exact meeting point, the waters looked divided blue and green currents running side by side, without mixing. In reality, this happens due to differences in salinity, temperature, and density. When Atlantic waters, saltier and warmer, meet the colder, fresher waters of the Pacific, they resist blending, creating a visible seam across the sea. It is not a permanent wall, but for moments, it is as if two worlds remain separate, refusing to merge. The story of these oceans is not just about waves crashing at the end of the world. Their meeting carries consequences that ripple far beyond Cape Horn. The mixing of the Atlantic and Pacific helps drive global thermohaline circulation, the great conveyor belt of the ocean. This circulation regulates Earth's climate, moving heat and nutrients around the planet. Without it, winters in Europe would be far harsher, tropical regions far hotter, and marine life would suffer. But this dance of currents is delicate. As polar ice melts due to climate change, fresh water pours into the oceans, altering salinity. 
Scientists warn that this could disrupt circulation, weakening the balance between the Atlantic and Pacific. The result? Rising seas, extreme weather, and ecosystems thrown into chaos. The place where two oceans meet is not just a line on the map. It is a key to Earth's survival. And then, there is the human story. For centuries, explorers risked their lives to chart these waters. From Ferdinand Magellan, who first crossed into the Pacific in 1520, to modern cargo ships that still navigate the Drake Passage when canals cannot handle their weight, the oceans have been both barrier and bridge. Even today, travelers journey to the southern tip of Chile to witness the seam where oceans meet, to stand at the edge of the world and see nature's forces colliding before their eyes. The Atlantic and Pacific will continue their eternal encounter long after we are gone. They will mix, separate, and mix again, shaping climates, nourishing life, and testing humanity's resilience. But the way we treat our planet will decide what kind of meeting this will be in the future. Will it remain a powerful but balanced exchange of waters? Or will it become a warning sign of oceans in crisis, overheated, acidified, and rising against the shores? Perhaps the greatest lesson is this. When we look at the meeting of two oceans, we are seeing a reflection of Earth itself. Different, diverse, sometimes in conflict, but always part of a larger, interconnected whole. At Cape Horn, at the very bottom of the world, the Atlantic and Pacific are not just oceans. They are storytellers. They remind us of the power of nature, the fragility of balance, and the endless journey of discovery that still lies ahead. So the next time you gaze out at the sea, imagine its journey, the places it has been, the forces it has met, and the hidden stories it carries. Somewhere, far away, the Atlantic and Pacific are still colliding, endlessly, powerfully, beautifully. And their meeting is not just the end of the world. It is the beginning of understanding. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel so you never miss the next story. Thanks for watching.